Hey guys, Matt Waxler here at Wheels Through Time. Welcome back to the Drive for History. This week we've been firing up and showcasing all sorts of rare machines from our Homemade America exhibit. And today we've got the Indian Belly Tank race car out. This thing is absolutely as cool as it gets, entirely handmade and falls right into our Homemade America exhibit. Now, as far as the exhibit goes, we can always, we've always kind of summed it up in a few short words, uh, innovations and inventions just to make life a little easier or a little bit more fun this belly tank race car absolutely falls in the more fun category a lot of you guys might recognize this thing from the american pickers television show i believe 2011 2012 mike and frank actually found this thing on a trip out to sturgis uh, at the murdo uh, pioneer auto museum in murdo south dakota uh, thing hadn't run in 40, 50 years. Uh, Mike has an eye for rare, an eye for oddities. Immediately knew he had to pick it up and within just a few short days, he was on the phone with my dad and myself, uh, figuring out when he could get down here to get this thing running. Uh, now the car is completely custom and it's got an incredible backstory. Uh, it was actually built at Custom City in Southern California, a uh, premier hot rod shop in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, utilizes uh, a combination of uh, we believe this is a P38 uh, drop tank, a couple hundred gallon drop fuel tank. So this would be on the underside of an airplane for long distance uh, flights, uh, be filled with fuel, when it's finished or when it's emptied, they drop this thing off. A lot of these things never were recovered. They drop them into the middle of the ocean, never seen again. Uh, this thing here was cut up, modified, uh, and, and used uh, as the body uh, for the belly tank race car here. Now, as I understand it, uh, there's a mod or a, a combination of Fiat steering components. It's an all tube chassis. So inside, and actually I'll take this rear uh, lid off for you and show you a little bit about the frame and what actually powers this thing. So um, as, as you can see, when you get a, a look inside the, the motor compartment there, the frame is all tubing, okay? So it's light, it's lean, it's limber. Uh, really, it'd separate this belly tank, uh, or excuse me, yeah, separate the drop tank and uh, build the frame, reassemble the drop tank around it. So it's powered by a 1940 Indian four-cylinder engine. Now Indian actually bought out the Ace Company in the late 1920s. Uh, this is the last generation Indian four-cylinder engine. They cast the cylinders in pairs, aluminum heads helped with cooling. Uh, these things were you know, capable of upwards of 100 miles an hour. Uh, Three-speed transmission, it's got the intake over exhaust, uh, valve configuration, a uh, small Schebler pot metal style carburetor over here. A uh, lot of power for a tiny little car like this. So as you can see, it's got the cooling fan. What they did was they actually extended the, the crankshaft and put a pulley right on the crank uh, that never came out of the front of this cam cover down here. Runs a short belt to the cooling fan. This cooling fan doesn't weigh a thing. I don't know if it's made from aluminum or magnesium or what, uh, but really pretty incredible stuff. So uh, gas tanks up front on this vehicle. Um, so aluminum gas tank right here in the nose, uh, kind of a long fuel line that comes all the way down. And if you notice, the carburetor is actually up high, higher than the gas tank on this car. So what they've incorporated here is an auto pulse fuel pump. Uh, the auto pulse fuel pump they used on uh, all sorts of early autos, uh, Porsches, uh, uh, Volkswagens. Uh, it was also an aftermarket fuel pump that you could use for applications just like this. Now, one of the most difficult things in getting this thing running, now again, the car hadn't run in probably 40 or 50 years after Mike had found it, probably since the 1960s. Uh, rebuilding the auto pulse fuel pump was really among the most challenging parts of the vehicle uh, itself. Um, the engine was put up in good running condition, so uh, had oil in it, uh, fluids were drained out of the gas tank. Again, it's an aluminum gas tank, no rust, uh, wasn't a problem whatsoever. It was clean as a, as a whistle. Uh, the fuel pump, tough to rebuild. They make actually rebuild kits for this, but one of the most common failures on the auto pulse fuel pump is the brass bellow that actually provides the fuel pressure. Just one, two pounds of fuel pressure on these little pumps. Uh, a lot of the times those brass bellows crack. You can try soldering it, but it's all moving parts and, and uh, doesn't tend to last long. So we were very lucky uh, that this one was in pretty good condition. We actually had another auto pulse 500 pump here that we could uh, uh, 
really rob a few parts and harvest what we needed to in order to get this thing going. Glass, sight glass here uh, in the filter. Uh, fills up to this large bowl Shebler carburetor uh, and really provides just enough fuel for this thing to, to run. Again, uh, Indian four-cylinder engines, they're right up around 80 cubic inches, say 78 cubic inches or so. Uh, so they've got a ton of torque, even power, three-speed transmission with a sliding gear kind of crash box. Uh, this setup actually utilizes uh, dispatch tow. Indian made a three-wheeler while Harleys had their survey cars. Indian's three-wheeler was actually called a dispatch tow. So this whole rear axle assembly is from an Indian dispatch tow and the leaf spring suspension works incredibly well. You can see that whole motor bouncing up and down there. The rear wheels, dispatch tow rear wheels. So they just basically harvested a whole rear end uh, run a tiny little short chain here uh, to the to the rear end and uh, generator ignition or excuse me distributor battery ignition distributor generator this thing's all set up to power the headlights tail lights horn view inside the cockpit here really neat setup uh, this thing steers like you wouldn't believe it's you think about turning right and this thing goes right uh, oil pressure gauge right over here you've got your uh, headlights, tail lights operated off the switch. Of course, we got our ignition switch right here. This actually is your choke setup. So there's a cable that runs all the way out the back. Now it's funny when I got this thing, uh, when we got this going, uh, all of this stuff up here was frozen. I probably spent six or eight hours upside down underneath the, the car or in the cockpit here with my legs hanging up, freeing up all the rusty, crusty parts underneath. So really took a lot of effort to get all that stuff working and functioning properly uh, but uh, the hard work was really worth it um, so again choke right here we've got the distributor here now or the the timing adjustment on the distributor so you can see this distributor moving back and forth when you pull start this now again kickstarter would be back here on an indian four-cylinder engine what they've done is set this up with a hand crank it really works quite well um, oddly enough sometimes it's three pulls sometimes it's 30 pulls so hopefully today it's going to fire up for us real easy uh, and again uh, emergency brake right here three speed shifter right here it's in neutral right now low forward second third and back and uh, it's such a neat tight little car uh, and as we always say you don't drive it you wear it uh, it just absolutely hugs you it hugs the road it's faster than you can imagine they say this thing back in its day uh, was clocked at almost 100 mile an hour great photo of my dad right here uh, the day that we got this thing running you can see that big old smile on his face and uh, first time the thing had been under its own power in, geez, probably 40 or 50 years. Now, shortly after the American Pickers episode, we were actually contacted by the fella that built the car or had the car commissioned. Uh, his name was Rob Rosella. Uh, this is actually a photo of Rob. Rob sent us the letter, you know, hey, I've got some great photos of me in the car. Uh, it was featured also in 1954 hot rod magazine this is july 1954 and here's a little bit about the car hey what's this star attraction of the custom city lot is this formula three racer modified fiat air-cooled indian four engine belly tank body hits nearly 100 mile an hour now as you can see in the photo it had all sorts of stuff on it headlights tail lights uh, big huge trumpet horns bumpers a lot of that stuff was harvested and taken off over the years but really the core of the car is still right here uh, and exists uh, really in as good a shape as we ever could have expected so uh, check this out here's rob 1953 after his his first win at a hot rod show and you can see this little trophy in here and believe it or not one day in the mail rob sent us the trophy here we are hot rod motorsports show Motor World Magazine, 1953. So pretty incredible, um, and it's in uh, pretty remarkable shape. The fact this trophy even still exists today is just unbelievable. So we're gonna fire this thing up here momentarily. Uh, pretty simple setup, again. So hand start, I've got gas in the, the tank, oil in the engine. I'm gonna retard the spark just a little bit. Uh, when you turn this key on here, you can actually see uh, or you can actually hear that auto pulse fuel pump working, which you don't hear it running, which means that carburetor ought to be full and a little bit of choke. And hopefully we'll be, there we go. Listen to that thing 
run. Smooth as it gets. No extra engine noise. It'll sit there and idle just all day. Here it is retarded. So, and that fan is belting out the air. It's cooling it as, as, as well as you could expect. So we're gonna get this thing uh, running down the road. I'm gonna take it for a ride.